All right, guys, welcome to RC Mojo. This week, we're going to do a few more bits on the Scania. We've got a good few odds and sods to deal with. OK, first job of the day. Since we repositioned the cross member that sits under the coupler and flipped it over, there's no longer enough clearance for the screws under the coupler plate. We could try and countersink the screws so they're not sticking out, but these two screws carry all the load from pulling the trailer, so removing material from the plate really doesn't seem like a good idea. Instead, we're going to modify the cross member. First, we remove the coupler and the plate, then mount the plate to the chassis with a couple of its screws. Now we can use the plate as a template to drill some pilot holes in the cross member. Remove the plate and we can see the two holes. We'll need to take them out to around six millimeters so there's plenty of clearance. Unfortunately, they're right on the edge, so we can't use a drill as it would slip out unless we clamped it all down and used a pillar drill. It's going to be much easier just to use the holes as a guide and extend them with a Dremel. Here we are then. The holes are now C-shaped slots that we know will line up perfectly with the screws on the bottom of the plate. When we refit the coupler, we need to make sure the small spring is the right way round. It was positioned, so it was tipping the coupler forwards, which would make linking up to a trailer very difficult. With the screws back in, we can place the plate on the chassis and see that it's now fitting perfectly. With the four M3x6s in, it feels very solid. Next at the back, we've got the wiring for the bumper to sort out. Now, as I've mentioned before, I'm not going to be going into super detail in this video. That kind of thing is going to end up being live streamed over on twitch.tv slash rcmojotv, hopefully with the complete streams available to watch on demand. On the PCB, there's a sticker that suggests using a 100 ohm resistor when powering from 5 volts, which given the parallel LED wiring is a bit of a compromise, but it'll be OK if a bit dim. From the PCB, there's lots of wires which we don't really want to have to trail along the chassis. So I've made a little board using some strip board. The red wires carry 5 volts and are connected together. At a later date, they could be split for separate supplies. The black wires carry the grounds for the left and right indicators, the number plate light, reverse, the brake lights, and have suitable surface mount resistors on the board. To connect it, all we need to do is connect the anode wires to the red wires on the board and connect the cathodes to the black wires, but the other side of the resistors. The board will now get wrapped in some insulation and carefully stuffed up out the way. I'm going to use some hot glue too, just to make sure it can't move around and fatigue the end of the wires. When it's all in, all we need to do is slide the cross member over the wires and refit it with the four M3 countersunk screws. The cross member has two holes in it that come in really rather handy for routing the wires. Well, looks like I didn't hit record, but the next step would have been refitting the bumper. It's the same process we went through at the end of the last video, but we also have to route the wires along the chassis so they pop up at the back of the cab. Right, next we'll look at the side skirts. They already have the LEDs fitted and wired out, but my concern is they're not going to be bright enough. We want them to run as bright as possible with a bit of a safety overhead at 5 volts. That way the electronics to control them can do some fancy lighting effects. You can see each of the LEDs has its own resistor, which is good, but I've got a feeling they're going to be set up for a higher voltage, probably a 7.2 volt 9 my pack. We can measure the resistance with a multimeter and check. Now it's a little bit awkward, but we can get the probes hooked up, and we can see there's a 470 ohm resistor in the line. That's OK, but we can safely go down to a 220 ohm, roughly doubling the current for more brightness. There's not a whole lot of point in trying to save any of the wiring. We just need to be very careful about the LEDs as they're glued into special lenses. We need to be very careful not to bend the legs too much and snap them off. If we take care with the cutters, we can trim the wires and pull the remains of the heat shrink from the legs. Now we just need to solder some resistors on, add a bit of wire, and we end up with something that looks like this. Now, they're not as neat as they could be, but I really didn't want to bend the legs on the LEDs, so they kind of set the path. It'll do though, and they'll be safe at 5 volts. To refit, we just need to pop out the screws that we kept safe on the chassis, offer up the skirt so the holes line up with the stays, and refit the two screws. Repeat on the other side, route the wires up behind the cab, and that's them back on the chassis. 
Next, we need to find a way to mount the electronics behind the interior. We want the light controller so it sits upright behind the false wall, so it's just above the gearbox. Now there's just enough space at the top, so when the cab tilts forward, it'll just brush the top of the PCB. And as is typical these days, I've gone and 3D printed a mount. It's got three screw holes that line up with the holes on the PCB, so that's going to be very secure. And on the left is a flat area for the receiver to mount to, nice and simple. To fit to the chassis, there's two feet that screw onto the bottom using a couple of countersunk screws. The feet are separate pieces to keep them nice and strong. If we printed them as one part, the layers would go across the feet, making them quite easy to snap. The mount then just drops down on the back of the plate on the chassis. The feet have holes in that line up with the posts already there. To make it extra secure, there's a hole in the middle of the feet for another screw to fix it down to the plate. We just need to pop a drill bit in and give it a spin to mark their positions. Remove the mount, remove the interior with its two screws, then drill out the points that we marked with a 2.5mm drill bit. Tap to M3 and reassemble, this time with an extra couple of M3x6 countersunk screws. The PCB mounts to the mount with three M3x8s. When it's on, it's evident that the mount is a little bit over-engineered. You can lift the whole truck by the PCB, but at least we know it's not going to be coming off anytime soon. For the receiver, I'm just going to use a bit of blue tack. It will of course end up being mounted with servo tape, but the blue tack will make it easy to remove just for the time being. The antennas will run something like this, with one across the top and the other vertical to one side. That will give the system the best range, although for indoor use it probably doesn't really matter that much. With the interior back on, you can see it's all nicely hidden. Although we might want to move the horizontal antenna, or maybe pop some black heat shrink over the end. Next up, we need to do something to actuate the coupler release. Now we could just refit the stock plastic plate and lever, but that's a bit boring. I think it's best to have remote control of the coupler, so I've printed a mount. It's the same one I made for the Actros, and I think it would fit on any 4x2 Euro cab and work with the older and newer couplers. It's designed to use a high-tech HS85 or 81, and the plate simply mounts to the same two holes that the stock plate mounts to. On the end of the servo arm is a metal quick link. Usually for model planes, they're meant as a quick way of attaching a servo arm to a linkage using a grub screw to clamp it down. Without the grub screw though, they work really well as a guide. For the rod itself, we've got a standard model aircraft linkage with a threaded end. Any good model shop should sell them in packets. On the end, I've threaded on a Tamiya ball cap. At the moment, the linkage is far too long to work with. After a quick trim, it's a lot more manageable. Now we need to thread the linkage through the quick link and pop the cup onto the ball so we can see what we're working with. The first thing that stands out is that from the side the linkage is at a bit of an angle. It'll work okay, but it doesn't quite look right. To make it fit nicer, we're going to put a couple of bends in so it sits nice and level, just done by eye with a pair of pliers. Much better. Next on the end of the linkage, we'll need a spacer made from some neoprene tube and a small collet to clamp onto the end. The spacer is only there, so if you need to manually release the coupler, there's something to get hold of. Now you can mark up the end of the rod and cut the excess off. Refit, and that's the servo installed. If we power it up with the servo tester, we can see how it works. Moving the arm forward, the release doesn't move and the linkage slides freely in the quick link. Moving it the other way, the quick link pulls on the linkage, opening the release. It's important when setting this up on the radio to carefully set the endpoints. They need to be just right so the release opens fully, but no more. Now with the servo plugged in, we can power up the radio and see how it works. I've already set the endpoints off camera, but here it is working from the transmitter. As you can see, it's going to work a treat. And should you ever need to, you can always pull the linkage forward manually. There's still lots to do on the truck before it's ready, but we're making good progress. Now if you'd like to chat about RC, or anything else really, we have a Discord server, link in the description. It's free, and means you can share pictures and videos of your creations. There's a few of us on there now, but more the merrier. Also, as mentioned earlier, I'm doing live streams. Link in the description again. Right now it's a bit experimental, but so far it seems to be working okay. 
The plan is in a few weeks to have a regular time slot plus impromptu streams when I've got a bit of time for some RC tinkering. Right, that's going to be it for this week. So as always, thanks for watching. Like if you liked, subscribe if you haven't, and leave a comment if there's something on your mind. Bye guys!